greatness. It's just something we made up. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift, reserved for a chosen few, for prodigies, for superstars. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. You can forget that. Greatness is not some rare DNA strand. It's not some precious thing. Greatness is no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. All of us. I always believe leaving no stone unturned. That's what makes you a champion. When you're out there, partying, washing around, someone out there at the same time is working hard. Someone is getting smarter and someone is winning. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. But if you want to win, there's absolutely no way around hard, hard work. No pain, no gain. We're wired differently. We have to set a goal that if we hit that goal, we're guaranteed to make sure all that other stuff in the middle is going to happen. Why three o'clock in the morning? Why don't you sleep? My appetite, my appetite. I said, ET, I want more, I can do more. If I accomplish this without a father, would I, if I accomplish this with my mom being a teenage mom, if I accomplish this as a high school dropout. How many of you believe in your life that your worst day can become your best day if you turn it around? If I can accomplish these things from this start, now that I'm at this place, knowing what I know now, what can I count? And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about more than just what you're going to do financially, more than what you're going to do in this industry in the next three years, right? More than that, what's your appetite? What are you, what are you going to do that will in, ensure that when the alarm clock goes off, that you're already up 10, 20 minutes before your alarm clock goes off? Why? You got to grind, grind, grind. You got to go through setbacks and disappointments. You got to go through it. I'm talking about grit. I'm talking about endurance. Just having more stamina than they got. In order to get to the next level, you got to sacrifice. You got to take risks. You got to be willing to do by faith whatever you're asked to do. Listen to me, there are no shortcuts to success. There are no discounts to success. It's always sweat. It's always blood. It's always tears. You always have to give all to be the best. And I think it's important to remember, we talk about content is king. We hear that a lot. And I think if content is king, then context is the kingdom. And even when you forget someone's name, which you know, I know we, we've talked about in the past and how important a skill it is to show someone you care by remembering them. One of the questions you ask yourself is, where do I know this person from? Because with the where creates the, the context and then you often the memory is there also as well. Yeah, it's interesting. Now I wanna talk a bit more about that because you know, as our devices get smarter and they become more of who we are, that whole thing of why do we need memory is something I'd, I'd really like to revisit today um, because, you know, five years, ten years from now, we'll still have, you know, we'll be partial cyborgs maybe at that point <laughs> to speak to Elon Musk, but yet the memory is still really important. Yes. Um, and I, I'd love to talk about that a little bit. I've, I've done, um, and I'm looking forward to going deep in that, I do trainings for, for Google and it's, you know, they're the, 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 the org they're organizing the world's information. And my, my mission really is helping people to remember the important parts of it because memory is a force multiplier. It's one of those things, I challenge anyone to think of anything that they do or want to accomplish that doesn't require memory. Anything, whether it's, it's kinesthetic body memory or remembering, like if we lost, look at the other end, if we forgot half of what we know or knew, half the words, half the people, half of the, our expertise, we wouldn't be very functional. Yeah. And so imagine if we could double our capacity to learn in a fraction of the time, then we become extremely productive and, and powerful. And I'm not talking about frantic fast. When I teach people how to read two or three times faster, I mean in efficiency and effectiveness. You know, you can imagine when, when you were, um, great documentary, by the way, I remind, when you're training for something, your body, if you had some kind of physical 
challenge uh, to, or let's say we're walking up a hill, you could do it on a level of efficiency and effectiveness than somebody who didn't wasn't in as as physically in shape because you are you are you are strong and you don't have to use as much energy. The same thing when I when I read, whether it's it's reading a, a book a day or, or people see me on stage, a hundred people stand up and introduce themselves and I re, you know recite everyone's name or large numbers or remember words. numbers they say everybody everyone could do that and it's not something there's no such thing as a good or bad memory there's a trained memory and an untrained an untrained memory and this works whether no matter your age your background your career your education your financial situation your gender your history your IQ none of that matters what matters is just like with anything is is, is focus and putting in the work and so it might not always be easy, but it's it's so it's so worth it. It's like describing to somebody what a rainbow looks like that has never seen a rainbow, or describing what a rose smells like who's never really who's never smelled a rose. Mm. And that's I, I I believe people. My mission is I believe people have genius inside of them, and I'm not talking about an IQ or, or number. I mean they have strengths and talents, and, and I want to be able to create an environment where they could they can let it out because the world needs more of that. My whole belief about the meaning of life, it's not the exact right word, but um, is to find out how many skills I can acquire that have utility, then put that utility to the test in service of something bigger than myself. So that's like my mission in life, right? So what are things that I should understand about the brain that would allow me to acquire more skills, acquire them faster, um, put them to use more effectively? Like what are either realizations about the brain or training techniques that I should know about? Um, yeah, I mean, a big part of this has to do with the, the fact that we live our lives mostly on autopilot unless we put a lot of effort into not doing that. Mm. And so... Um, <clears throat> so just by getting off, off autopilot, I'm... But wouldn't that... So that's ultimately just sort of making new connections. So examples that you give oftentimes, drive home a new way, brush your teeth with your left hand. Yeah. Um, and I certainly do feel the impact of that. Like from a stave off neurogenerative decline, I, that seems to make a lot of sense. And you've talked about the nuns who donated their brains to science, why I don't know, but that's incredible. And all of them, right, had like early stage dementia, but they showed no signs. No, not all of them, but a much bigger percentage than anyone thought, about a third of them. Wow. Had, had Alzheimer's, but it wasn't clear when they were alive because they were so cognitively active, because they were doing stuff. They were, first of all, they were embedded in the social network because they were right. living in the convents. And so they had responsibilities and conversations and so on. And that made it so that even though their brain was falling apart with Alzheimer's, Nobody knew it. They, they didn't have the cognitive effects there. And is this at the center of your upcoming book, Livewired? Yeah, it's, you know, the theme of that book is that you can't really think about the brain as hardware and you can't think about it as software. It's this weird other thing that I call liveware, which is that it's constantly reconfiguring its own circuitry. So everything that you learn, every little thing changes uh, the, the pattern of circuitry in your brain. So when you first learned that my name was David, you know, that, that's underpinned by a physical change in the structure of your brain, which is wild. That's crazy. I mean, every single thing that you learn. I can tell you can make your brain work better in a week. You can make your heart more coherent. You can change the field around your body. You can strengthen your immune system. You can change your gene expression. You can lengthen your life. You can create so many oxidative changes in your cells. We have great research to prove that. That's the truth of who you are. That's the truth, that miracle within you. That evidence is the backbone that gives people permission to try it out. It's the language. Then you see someone standing on the stage telling their story in testimony, whether it's stage four cancer, whether it's MS, whether it's blind people seeing, deaf people hearing. You can't go back to being the same person after that. Evidence is the loudest voice. And so then when we begin to make those inroads, and the footprint exists in consciousness, and you're witnessing it in three-dimensional reality, the, the, the illusion of limitation begins to change. And now all you want to do is you crave the unknown. So people in our work don't get up in the morning and go, oh God, I got to do my meditation today. <laughs> no, they're not doing that. They're, they, their body is waking them up saying, get out of bed because they don't want the magic to end. And when you start seeing 
the gap between cause and effect, thought and experience closing down. You're moving closer to the divine. And when that happens, all the things you thought you want, you no longer want because the overcoming process leading to who you become, nobody can take that away from you. So we practice it in, in our seated meditations. We practice it standing and walking. You better walk as it. And you better be able to embody it and practice doing it with your eyes open. So when you return back to your life, when you walk from your house to your car, you're, work, you're walking in the energy of your future. And if you keep doing that, it's going to become a habit. And people are going to start looking at you going, something's different about you. You know why? Because you're no longer showing up equal to their memory of you. Something's different about you. You're unpredictable. It's not what you're saying any longer. It's what you're, who you are. And so that person then is off their timeline. They're not headed to that same future. And all I want to do in a week-long event is bump everybody off that timeline into a new future. Some, some people, huge degrees. You know, stage four cancers, tumors disappearing. You listen to that story of the person on the stage. Your next meditation, you are not going to go half in. You're going to go all in. And that's all I want is I want people to go all in. I want to provide people with my greatest understanding of the truth and then numerous opportunities to experience it, nothing more. And when the magic starts to happen, it's beyond, way bigger than me, it's beyond my control. I all I want to do is provide the environment where they feel safe enough to begin to create. When there's no safety net, people perform better in sports and everything else if you don't have a plan B. So we have to pay more attention to the negative because the negative can stop people who are trying to make a difficult life decision. And maybe we don't need 10,000 hours of practicing courage, but we could become cognizant of how we let fear manifest itself in our daily lives and instead counteract that so we could get past our fears and do the things that we're meant to do and be the people we're meant to be. See, if you know what your life work is, I encourage you to start working on it. If you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. A, a lot of people are looking at this the wrong way. There is a blessing in everything. Behind every moment of adversity in your life, there is a blessing and a lesson. You can be afraid of success, you can be afraid of failure, you can be afraid of looking ridiculous, you can be afraid of change, either positive or negative change. The only way to deal with fear that I found in my life is a couple ways. One of those ways is to turn it on itself. If you're not going to get rid of fear, then use fear. Use fear or it uses you. It's that simple. And there was something that had been on my heart and something that I had been thinking about but had long let fear get in the way of. And in doing so, I realized that, that I had come into a whole new world. I had come up with my plan for how I was going to change the world. About the things that you do that you shouldn't do, that you know you shouldn't do beyond a shadow of a doubt, right? There's some things like that. That's bad habits and poor aim and all of the resentment and hatred and aggression and unresolved conflicts and all those things that are dementing you and warping you and then think, okay, those things get the upper hand, man. They get the upper hand and they take you the worst possible place you could go. You, know, you don't magnify the degree to which the pain ought to be affecting you. And so really what he means in that is, listen, you're gonna get out of your life what you'll accept. And that's really difficult for people, I think, to understand is, look, what you think you're worth and what you're gonna tolerate is absolutely what you're gonna bring into your life and what the outward part of your life's gonna look like. So I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you wanna go, if you wanna make it today, and things are changing so fast, you have to literally run to stand still. I'm saying that you've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Where I was going to be doing a lot of things that scared me, all the time and it's something that over the past year and a half of my life I have been so grateful for especially because I've been able to live my mantra. I've been designing and redesigning and redesigning and redesigning right um, and looking at the blueprint called me and what works and what doesn't work and embracing what works and embracing what didn't work.